Alright, welcome to Kazurag Part 24. This will simply be the map showcase, which is where I show you the map uh, at the end of the game after the last treaty. Uh, and basically, first I'm going to talk about, um, you know, just a simple introduction into the world of Kazurag like, um, that the mod developers made. So basically, Germany wins World War One, and whenever the war is lost, um, France uh, fl flees to uh, Africa, and Britain flees to Canada. The reason why they flee uh, to Africa and Canada is because of the fact that their country was taken over by communist revolutionaries. Uh, they were so outraged that they started a revolution. Alright. <clears throat> Among other, you know, reasons. So. Throughout the, um, couple years, uh, from 18, I mean, 1917, or 1918, to 1936, um, Germany is able to take over multiple territories, including, uh, some of China. Um, and they also just go ahead and take, uh, Malaysia, you know, the, these areas. They establish Daush, Middle Africa. Um, they also take Sierra uh, Leone. You know, lots and lots of things happen. Uh, Hoover is never elected out of presidency because of the fact that the, uh, Great Depression never happens. Uh, so he serves two terms. Canada is ruled by George V, King George V, you know, because he moved there. Um, here's Wilhelm II. Uh, he was the king of Germany during World War I. Then there's the Russian Republic, which is ruled by Alexander Kerensky, who... Um, gets assassinated uh, later on through the game. He, uh... Basically, the reason why Russia isn't communist is because of the fact that Germany did not allow them to become communist. They stopped them in time. Somehow, Georgia, however, turned communist, and no one seemed to really care. So, there you go. Um... Afghanistan was able to take some land. India broke apart. China broke apart, but there's still the Qing Empire itself. Uh, Japan um, continued along its path towards imperialism. But, uh, they have Manchuria, and they actually go to war with Russia and end up with this land right here. Either that or they end up that with that land um, once World War Two ends, I mean, World War One ended uh, through a treaty. Oh wait, no, actually that's, never mind, so they invaded Russia uh, because of the fact that the Japanese uh, was part of the Entente, so. Alright, the Netherlands, the, you know, are the Netherlands. Um, Belgium's replaced. Belgium is replaced by um, Flanders Wallonia, which is a puppet of the German Empire. Uh, Lithuania, Baltic, uh, United Baltic Duchy, uh, Ruthenia are all puppets of the German Empire. Ukraine is um, actually independent. The Don Cuban uh, Union is a result of the treaty, along with this, that, uh, this and that, and these three states right here. Uh, the Bul uh, Bulgaria is bigger because of the fact that it was, you know, with the um, Middle Europa uh, faction during World War One. And that is about it. Um, oh, yeah. France ends up communist. Um, 
these guys end up communist. In fact, these this entire area right here is united, uh, and this area right here is also united. Back into the United Provinces of, Amer of America, which existed in 1836 um, or so, you know, in that general uh, time. Let's see here. Um, e Ecuador ends up with this land back. And that's pretty much, oh yeah, La Plata uh, is a thing now. Basically, it took over uh, Paraguay and Uruguay. So now it's just La Plata. Anyways, let's go ahead and go on to our um, scenario. This will be the, this is 18, uh, 19... 50. So that means that 14 years have passed. Hold on. It ends up a whole lot of stuff can change in only 14 years. America ended up in a civil war. The communists won. Um, at the time that the communists won, Canada was still ruled by... Um, the success, uh, successor to King George V. They lost terribly. And they took over all of America, basically right here. I ended up uh, annexing Mexico, uh, I mean Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and all of California during the American Civil War. Throughout that period, I also annexed um, the two countries here, here, and here. Uh, I also took over Cuba, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. Basically what happened here was the French uh, had a ret uh, retribution against uh, Germany. Germany lost and was completely... Um, Disassembled with the uh, by the and it was turned into the North German Union, the Rhenish Socialist Republic, the Bavarian Union, and by the end of uh, 1950 or so, uh, the Prussian lands was uh, given to Poland uh, as a reward for their help in the war efforts. Uh, the Baltic Union is also taken over, turned into communist, and united with Lithuania. Uh, Belarus, which is uh, modern-day Belarus. <laughs> uh, it used to be called White Ruthenia. Uh, in the game, I just, you know, remember that its name changed to Belarus. Anyways, Belarus actually has more land, I believe. Yeah, it definitely has more land than it does in our um, timeline. Uh, what happened with Ukraine and why they lost the little land right here is because of the fact that they joined the war. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that in a moment. Alright. So then after that, uh, the only powers that was left was the Entente, which consider, uh, consisted of uh, the Kingdom of Canada, which at the time owned this area of America. Right here. Um, the Cape Commune. Russia, which was the Russian Empire, uh, India, which was basically this right here. It still wasn't completely, actually, yeah, it was united, um, and, uh, and Australia. Also, Mongolia and, um, the puppet region right here, and also Tibet, uh, I believe was... Also in the war. So basically, um, after Europe f fell and all this, the Cold War started. Except this time with Mexico, France, Britain, 
Spain, this entire area, um, and also most of this area of uh, Africa right here, because the fact that they were um, freed um, and turned communists. All right. So. The prelude to the uh, Cold War, basically, there was a giant South American continental war uh, between communists or Marxists and um, non-Marxists. The Marxists, uh, you know, won because of the fact that all these are uh, Marxist countries right here. And... Uh, there's a little pocket of commun uh, Marxist countries over here, too. Basically, what happened was the Third International, which was the uh, faction with France and Britain and Italy and Spain and pretty much all of Europe uh, that was Marxist, uh, the South American Synarchists and the uh, Asian Synarchists. I forgot the actual name of them. Basically combined and formed the Fourth uh, International, that sparked a whole lot of uh, tension throughout the world, uh, world, and also attributed uh, to the Cold War getting hot. Um, whenever they cold, uh, what finally caused the Cold War to get hot was Canada released the uni uh, American Union state, which made them uh, pretty much own all their earlier existing territories except for. Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and California. They demanded California, Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona back. I refused, and, a war, and war was declared. Obviously, the victors of the uh, Cold War was the Marxist countries. Uh, by the end of the treaty, um, in fact, we're going to go ahead and load in the save. Don't worry, if you wanted to see all the stats, I have them written down on a piece of paper. Alright. So, during the code, uh, the prelude of the code, uh, Cold War, Ukraine was actually annexed by Russia. The Russian Empire. Uh, it was a petition, and basically, you know, it sparked even more tension. But as I said before, the one that kicked it off was the confrontation between the American Union State and the United uh, States of Mexico. Okay. So before the war started, there was three major factions. Or actually just three factions, period. It was the Fourth International, the Entente, and the Axis. Now I know what you're wondering, you know, you're thinking. What? Axis? Those are Nazis. Well, in this timeline, they're not. They're actually just simply uh, Middle uh, Eastern countries around here that basically uh, band together against the Ottoman Empire, took it over, puppeted it, and also took even more land. Hamashinai uh, Arabia um, is basically Saudi Arabia, but, you know, but this guy actually taking it over. Saddam Hussein. Gotcha. So the uh, Hussein dynasty actually takes over uh, Arabia. Um, Damascus is turned into their capital. Just something that I figured I would know. Turkey is puppeted by Persia. Persia takes a lot of land right here. Uh... And, you know, they take a little land right here. They basically split Iraq. And there you go. Alright. So, the war begins. Japan. Russia. Um, the Scandinavian region, except for Finland. 
and Canada against uh, pretty much the rest of the world. Also, the French Republic that was um, in Africa. Obviously, we won, and this was the result of the treaty. So even though that the state of Uruguristan um, was a Russian puppet, and even though that, you know, technically they should have been taken over by a Marxist country, they wasn't, and this is where I sort of messed with things. Basically what happened was they signed a petition for annexation by the Qing Empire. The Qing Empire obviously accepted, and it was incorporated into their territory. Tibet tried to do the same, failed. Um, let's see here. The uh, Turkestan, the Turkestanian uh, Khanate, declared independence and then signed a uh, petition for annexation between Persia, which is now the Persian Empire, right? Wow, okay, I guess it's a republic or something now. Pujar. I don't know. Either way, um... Signed a petition for annexation, the petition was accepted, and it was split between Persia and Afghanistan to take it over. Pakistan um, basically declared independence, uh, de uh, petitioned for annexation uh, with Afghanistan, Afghanistan accepted, and that's how they ended up with this land right here. Oh, man. All right. We're... <laughs> I'm almost done extra uh, explaining things. Russia was mostly, um... All right. Anyways, uh, the Soviet Union was basically peti uh, pet whatever. Uh, man, what's the partition? That's right. They were partitioned, and basically, this entire area, uh, the Caucasus region, was turned into a Marxist state. Also, Belarus gained more land. Um, Ignore the Kingdom of Ukraine, it's just a glitch. It's actually the Socialist uh, Republic of Ukraine. And Finland uh, already owned this land, actually, before the war even started. And there you go. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Africa is partitioned into different... Um, countries throughout the game uh, or the timeline the 14 year timeline basically what in what ended up happening was no matter what I could not see these African countries not becoming independent no, number one they were busy by um, the their controllers which was Germany and France has been in so many wars that an independence movement was guaranteed. There was no way that there was not going to be an independence movement. Now, what is it going to be successful if they actually used weapons? That I am honestly not sure of. But, regardless, a petition was signed. Africa overwhelmingly wanted to start... Um, walking towards the path of independence. France, Britain, uh, and Spain, because they were, uh, they're pretty much were the last colonial powers whenever it came to Africa. Uh, obviously had to agree because of the fact that they've been to war, uh, they've been at war for a good 15 years. Uh, their manpower is, you know, exhausted. Um, by the way, the death toll, uh, death toll, at least for Mexico, was around 3 million, I think, or more. At least 3 million um, people died during any war, or all the wars combined in the past 15 years.
that's a lot of graves. But, I mean, their country is, you know, in fact, I'm about to show you the statistics in a moment. Anyways, so, one by one, the African countries start, um, you know, declaring, um, or, you know, starting their own countries. Of course, it says puppet uh, of the uh, of France. Basically, I simulated that in five years they're all going to be completely independent. Right now, the uh, colonial powers of the world are simply making sure that they drop them into the pond gently, so to speak. You get what I mean? Like, they don't want Africa to become a giant warring state. They actually want to make sure that um, these guys are going to be prosperous. Uh, so they're sending fi uh, financial aid programs. And honestly, you, 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 know, you could say, John, you know, that's a lot of money. They've been at war for so long. Well, you see, that's the thing about the Marxist doctrine. It does have an advantage whenever it comes to war. Because of the fact that resources are distributed free, um, equally or throughout the population. You get what I mean? Uh, distribution of resources are more available. So that is how um, basically uh, the funds are coming in. As you may notice, Morocco is still under Spanish control. Uh, Span uh, Spain ended up uh, having this, the uh, basically Gabon, Angola, and uh, Mozambique. Uh, ba and that's oh yeah, and Senegal. Basically, they let Senegal go, Angola, Mozambique, and Gabon. All that's left is. Uh, Morocco, and the reason why I had that happen was simply because of the fact that in our own timeline, West Morocco, which is this right, I mean, South Morocco, yeah, West Morocco, whatever, South Morocco, this area right here, this area right here, Rio uh, de Oro, Rio de Oro, um, in our timeline, was actually under Spanish control until 1976, I believe. Maybe wrong on that date, you know, don't climb through my windows and snatch my people up. Um, so basically, uh, out of taste of history, uh, Morocco is still under Spanish control, and Spain is currently trying to assimilate the population down here. Alright. What else we have? Oh yeah. I forgot to mention that um, the Philippines declare independence from America, and they join the Axis. Basically, what the Axis uh, was, was they were a bunch of countries who said, we don't care about capitalism or Marxism or whatever, we just want to be free. So they band together, uh, and this is, of course, after they actually won the war against the Ottoman Empire. You know, they had to figure out, hey, we got, you know, a military alliance. What are we going to do with it now? I know. How about we protect each other against the chaos and craziness that is going on against uh, across the world? Because, yeah, some crazy stuff is happening. So, throughout the years, they slowly gained power. Um, they gained the favor of the Queen Empire. Uh, before the Cold War got hot, uh, by the way, at the time but, uh, before the Cold War got hot, uh, the Qing Empire actually reconquered all this land through here, right here. This land uh, over here was taken over by the Russians. Um, India is making its uh, steps towards um, independence also. As, uh, as well as the Australasian Union, and also the Dutch East Indies. The Indo-Chinese Union, uh, instead of there being Vietnam, there is instead um, the Indo-Chinese Union. They successfully united that region whenever the war was over.
Ho Chi Minh. Yeah. Uh, some history buffs might know who that is. I believe I do, if I remember correctly. Alright, what else do we have to talk about? Um... Oh yeah, let's address this little area right here. It's basically part of the peace deal. Um, basically, Mexico freed the United States, uh, the uh, CSA, which is the Combined Syndicalists of America, uh, syndicates, I mean. And there you go. They don't hate me, even though I took over half their land. They don't hate me for some reason, Mr. Norman Thomas. Uh, they were able to take, um, Southern Ontario, Ontario, New Brunswick, that's the name, uh, Nova Scotia, and St. Lawrence, but the rest of Canada and also Alaska, you know, was annexed and is currently, uh, you know, going through the independence program. Basically, <clears throat> what I pres here's what I predict. Uh, would be the future in this world, in this alternate world, because honestly, I'm to the point to where my uh, the actual technologies in the game no longer exists, pretty much. So there you go. Um, you know, it goes all the way up in not, until 1945. <sighs> what I predict to happen in the future. It's simply, these guys stay completely, like, united with each other. That's how I see it happening, because of the fact that they're pretty much the last non-Marxists in the entire world. Now, is there a possibility that, one by one, they would each have Marxist revolutions? That is a very real possibility. Especially because of the fact that pretty much what happened was reverse of what happened in our timeline in pretty much every single way. You know, Mexico becomes pretty much one of the superpowers in the world instead of America. They also turn communists. The communists, uh, or the Marxists, um, basically take over um, the world instead of the capitalists. Uh, when in reality, really, the capitalists pretty much kept the world, but... That's besides the point. Um, so yeah, one by one, there is a possibility that each and every one of these guys will uh, turn into uh, Marxist regimes. Though there is also another possibility that they can build a nationalistic zeal and basically stay the way they are. Because most of them right now are paternal autocrats, authoritarian democrats, or social conservatives. Uh, I believe that there are also uh, market liberal. Oh wait, no, never mind. Yeah, no market uh, liberals at all. So yeah, I do not see. Basically, I the only way I see this going is them moving farther and farther to the right. Um, meanwhile, uh, in terms of the Marxist ideologies, it appears that the Marxist. Um, people will actually end up uh, looks like a whole lot of totalists and a whole lot of syndicalists not too many social what is it hold on yeah radical socialists uh, there aren't too many of those anymore there used to be a lot but slowly you know people have been going more and more left um, Turkey's guaranteed to gain their independence sooner or later. As far as this area is concerned, I honestly see a brighter future for the Middle East in this timeline. It's not completely screwed up. Well, it, it sort of is. Basically, at least this way, they even have their capital in Damascus, not over here. And they originated over here. So basically what's going to happen is most of this population over here is going to assimilate. If there is Jewish um, 
mistreatment of the Jewish population, we'll probably see Jewish uh, people slowly migrating into, um, actually, this area right here could actually be designated uh, to Jewish populations because of the fact that uh, a nice bit of Jewish uh, population was in this area right here, I believe. Hopefully I didn't miss the spot uh, right there. Either way, uh, so there's two candidates, either uh, this area right here, which can be uh, basically uh, <sighs> encouraged around the world. Uh, for the Jewish population to move here, that way they can, you know, not be discriminated. But in all honestly, I, uh, honesty, I don't really see too much Jewish discrimination in this timeline because of the fact that the Nazis never rot, rise into power, and anti-Semitism really never shows up unless it showed up in France and uh, Britain. <coughs> and, um... Let's move on to the statistics, and then we will call that the end of this series. Alright. By the end of the game, we were the third most powerful nation in the world. Probably even more, because of the fact that we ended up, uh, you know, controlling Japan, having them puppeted. Uh, as well as many other countries throughout the world, but these are our rough estimates. We are fourth in the total army, which, I mean, really, if you take into account Mexico in our timeline and Mexico in this timeline, they're way more powerful. So, in all honesty, I think I did a good job in improving the strength of Mexico, uh, which is pretty much the goal of any game. You know, if I play as Sweden, I want to make Sweden powerful. More powerful than in this timeline. And, you know, Colombia, you know, Brazil, etc. Alright, the Navy, we actually have the 21st best Navy in the world. So it's bad. Air Force, we actually did pretty good at. Uh, we are third. We have the st uh, third strongest Air Force. And here is where we really triumph. We ended up with the second best industry in the world, and the uh, the first best is France, but, but, there is a but, only by 5% or so. So in all honesty, I can see us gaining all my fa uh, all these factories back and us easily becoming the, su uh, the superpower of the world. Not only that, but we have a whole lot of underdeveloped areas that we can uh, develop. France, however, does not. So that's that. Honestly, not a bad timeline. Um, the workers' revolution has prevailed. So, if you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope that you have a good one. See ya.